you want a very fast four door, so you want a BMW M5. Except you don't because that's far too obvious and very, very expensive. Instead, you want something that's like an M5, but far subtler, less predictable, and much more affordable, which means you want one of these. For 55 years, Alpina has been producing BMW M car alternatives that are cooler than the real thing, just as fast, but also more laid back. They're BMW M cars where M stands not for motorsport, but for moderate. This is the B5 by Turbo. Like all Alpinas and most super saloons these days, it's four-wheel drive. The engine is a 4.4-litre twin-turbo V8, uprated by Alpina's engine wizards with bigger turbos, improved cooling and Marley pistons. Power is rated at 600 horsepower and torque at 590 pounds-foot. That's enough for 0 to 62 miles per hour in three and a half seconds and 205 miles per hour flat out. Now this Alpina, this is the pre-facelift model, whereas the BMW, that's the post-facelift model. So there are some subtle styling changes outside, also within the cabin, but this is a fantastic cabin. You've got the Alpina logo front and center on the steering wheel, and then Alpina specific dials as well with the blue background, they look great. I also like this little plaque down here that says BMW Alpina B5 by turbo, all rad. Limousine, 207, and then the Alpina logo, and then her Stella Exclusiva Automobile. It's good. The material quality is exceptional in here. Lovely soft leather all over the place. Nice seating position, bundles of space. It's a great cockpit. Meanwhile, BMW's in-house alternative to the M5 is now available in the UK. The M550i xDrive, yep, that means it's four-wheel drive as well, trails the full-fat M5 by almost 100 horsepower with 530 horsepower. But do you really need any more than that? The M550i is a bit like BMW doing an Alpina. The blueprint is the same, massive performance, subtler styling than an M car, and more of a focus on comfort than agility. The engine is the same basic 4.4-litre twin-turbo V8 as you'll find in the Alpina. With 553 pounds foot of torque, the M550i hits 62 miles per hour in 3.8 seconds. Crazy numbers for a sub M5 performance saloon. This updated 5 Series cabin, it's only very subtly different to the pre-facelift one, but they've done a good job with it because the overall impression of quality has gone up. It's really impressive in here actually. It's a shame there's no plaque down here with an essay written on it, but overall, it's such a good cabin. It actually feels seven series like in terms of space, material quality, build quality. It's just a lovely place to spend hour upon hour. Two very convincing alternatives to the M5. They're subtler, much less obvious, and far cheaper to buy. Question is then, two year old B5 by Turbo or brand new M550i xDrive? We're only gonna figure that out by driving the two cars back to back. So let's do exactly that. And we're starting off in the Alpina because this is the one I've been looking forward to driving the most, frankly. My favorite driving mode is Comfort Plus. You've heard of Sport Plus. This car has got Comfort Plus, extra comfort. That's what it says, extra comfortable setting. And it really is extra comfortable. The suspension on this car in that mode is so plush and so fluid, it's as though the road underneath you is perfectly smooth. It's lovely. It's really good around town, brilliant on the motorway as well, but on these more open flowing roads, there's so little body control in that mode that your head gets tossed around, your stomach gets churned up, and you feel a little bit car sick. So that's when you have to get into the normal comfort mode or sport mode. Let's do exactly that, into sport mode. We'll put it into manual mode as well and start having a bit of a push. First things first, that engine, oh my goodness, 600 horsepower, loads of torque. It's just a massive powerhouse. It's always quite subdued. Even in sport plus mode under full throttle, it never really ignites 
sort of orally. The soundtrack never really comes to life. It's just a, a fairly muted, distant rumbling sound that actually I really like. But it's got masses of performance. It's so strong. Throttle response is pretty good. When you nail the throttle, the engine just seems to take a huge gulp of air and then it just thunders you down the road. It's awesome. The gearbox is really good, just works really well. So smooth in auto mode, but then good and snappy in manual mode as well. But it's the way the chassis works on this car that's utterly spellbinding. It's got massive wheels, little skinny slim tires. There's hardly any suspension travel. In sport mode, body control is actually really good given the size and weight of the car. But the ride comfort, the way it deals with bumps just smothers them. It's witchcraft. Proper Alpina stuff that, isn't it? Somehow they just make their cars ride beautifully. This particular B5 could be subtler. Those decals on its flanks give the game away somewhat, but those aside, it's still much more discreet than an M5. It sits lower than the standard BMW on which it's based on stiffer springs. There are custom wishbones, more negative camber and Alpine specific tuning for the rear biased X-Drive four wheel drive system. Alpina has released an updated B5, but it's not yet in the UK. You'll pick up a 2018 example for just over £60,000, around 35 grand less than you'll pay for a new M5. The steering is pretty numb. There's really no sense of connection at all. But with that extra camber that they run on the front axle, you get such positive turn into a corner. So it just darts into bends with masses of grip. Given how comfortable and how refined and civilized and luxurious this thing is, it has no right to be anything like as agile, as balanced, as responsive in corners as it is. Again, it's witchcraft, it must be. It means that this B5, it's so fast along a road and actually fun to drive as well. You really do enjoy yourself behind the wheel of this thing and you don't feel like you're driving an enormous car down a tiny road because there's a precision to it, there's a response to it that makes it feel smaller and lighter than it is. I think this X-Drive four-wheel drive system really suits these cars, these very, very powerful super saloons. And it's that clever, active kind of four-wheel drive system that only powers the rear axle in normal driving, but then when it needs to, will send drive to the front axle. Okay, so being four-wheel drive, it won't power over steer like an old M5, but frankly, who cares? What you do have in this car is masses of traction. Basically, you can use all of that power, even on a damp or wet road, and there's just no wastage. This is such an impressive car, this Alpina. Wow, they've done such a good job with this thing. It's hard to believe the M5 could be better than this. It's hard to believe that M550i could be any better than this. I suppose we'd better find out. This M550i is so discreet, but so fast, I'm desperate to use it as a getaway car. There must be a bank we can rob around here, or a post office? No comfort plus mode in this car. Seems like a shame. Actually, it's properly comfortable though. The ride quality is, again, really good. I don't think it's quite as creamy smooth as the Alpina's, but my word, it's just... It's so relaxing just being in this thing. It's lovely. Even on a bumpy road, in comfort mode at least, it just doesn't beat you up. It's not punishing in that way, which is, of course, exactly what a car like this needs to be like. In normal driving, that 4.4 litre V8 in front of you, it's subdued, but you're aware it's there. It's like a, a reassuring presence. And then, when you get into sport mode, it really comes alive. It's not just a big lazy V8 with lots of torque that rumbles along. Actually, when you dig into the throttle pedal, it's got really good throttle response, sharper response 
than the Alpina's engine. And it really revs hard to the red line. It's full of energy. So it's a big torque monster, but also it's a responsive, quite revvy engine as well. Gearbox just perfectly suited to this car. The X-Drive system again works really well, suits the car. More than 500 horsepower in a very big, heavy car like this. At that point, I think you probably want four-wheel drive. And this car has got that differential in the rear axle so that when you're driving away from corners, you just get very, very positive drive away from the apex with no wheel spin at all, no slippage whatsoever. It's just very positive, very precise, bang, out of the corner. Again, the M550i's four-wheel drive system is trick. In normal driving, it only powers the rear axle, but in low grip conditions or when you're really hammering along, it shuffles drive forwards. Adaptive dampers are standard, while active anti-roll bars and rear wheel steering are options. Unless you know what you're looking for, the M550i could be a high-spec 520D. The smoke door mirror casings and red calipers hinted all that power beneath the bonnet, but they don't exactly scream 530 horsepower. The M550i X-Drive starts at £67,595, similar money to a two-year-old Alpina B5 and 30 grand less than the M5. Actually, it's absurd that this M550i feels as fast as it does, and it's not even the really quick one. Wow. In terms of the way these two cars steer and handle, Actually, despite all their similarities, they do feel quite different. So this car has got rear wheel steering, and so at very low speeds, it just makes it much more manoeuvrable. But then when you get going, what you find is a kind of positivity in the steering. There's just no slack whatsoever. Off center, you just get immediate response, more so than you get from the Alpinas. That gives the car an impression of agility but actually, what you find when you stick it into a few bends is that it's the Alpina that has the more grippy, the more direct and responsive front end. It's just got more grip. Only a little bit though, I have to say. I mean, it still handles bloody well, this thing. It feels balanced. It's got tons of grip. Again, like the Alpina, you can actually have fun driving this thing. It's not just a straight line beast you really can enjoy threading it through corners. So in terms of performance, acceleration, the two cars feel quite similar, but the soundtracks are really different from inside, I think probably from the outside as well. In the M550i, you're so much more aware of the V8 doing its thing just in front of you. It's louder, it's more distinctly V8 in its soundtrack, it's a proper, angry rumble rather than a sort of distant sound. It's right there with you. One of the outstanding impressions that I've got from driving this car is that it feels so much more together as a performance car than the previous M5, the F10, you know, the first turbocharged one. That was quite a loose and wayward car. This one, it's so much better tied down. It's so much more agile, so much keener and more responsive. It makes you wonder, why the hell do you need the M5 at all? Both are great to drive, whether you're clipping along at speed or cruising vast distances on the motorway. But given the choice, I'd have a two-year-old Alpina B5 over a brand new M550i. It's just more characterful than the BMW and a shade keener in bends. An updated M5 is due any moment. It will have to be spectacular to convince me it's a better fast four-door than either of these. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe to the Piston Heads YouTube channel and head over to pistonheads.com. There's a two year old Alpina B5 waiting to be drooled over.